Welcome to Octane Vein. Today is Friday the 13th of May and I have exactly four weeks to get this Alpha 155 all back together and ready to leave for the Nürburgring. Now, unfortunately, I haven't had a very productive week. I was away last weekend, so I didn't get anything done. And then the rest of the week, obviously I've been at work and I got a few things done, but nothing near like I wanted to. So I just want to bring you up to speed with where I am and what is the top of my list of priorities at the moment. So the main thing that I need to do is order parts. So I've made a list of everything I think I need. Um, so far it's just got the major parts on there. So things like the head gasket set or the gasket set for the engine, uh, the clutch, the water pump, all parts like that. that are, you know, if, Without them, I'm just not gonna get it back together at all. I'm actually struggling a little bit to find those parts anyway. I've found all the normal auto factors. So places like GSF, Euro car parts, those kind of places, they just don't have anything. They, they're not even getting a lead time on their system. So it's just things that they can't get. So I've emailed a couple of the alpha specialists. Actually, my dad has helped me out. He, uh, he prepared a spreadsheet with a load of bits on. So that's been a great help. He's a bit of a legend. Um, so he sent that off to a couple of alpha specialists. So I'm still waiting to hear back from them. But one of them has already said that they can't get a clutch. So my saving grace in all of this is there's a guy on the Alpha Facebook page, a guy called Chris. He sent me a message and he sent me a load of part numbers and a load of manufacturers for some of the bits. So it is heading in the right direction, so that's good. Uh, the other thing that I want to do is obviously clean up the engine. Now, as I showed you before, uh, the, the engine is in really quite a disgusting state. It's obviously been leaking oil for quite a long time. The coolant galleries around the, the liners they're pretty disgusting, they've got a lot of sludge in them and the only way to clean it properly really is to get a pressure washer on it and to, to pressure wash all that sludge and all that oil off it. I could do it manually with a you know hot water, hot soapy water and, and a brush or with some thinners, white spirit, something like that but it wouldn't be as thorough a job and really getting the pressure washer in there means that I can get all the coolant uh, channels, all the pipes inside the engine, get them all cleared out so that when I do fit a new water pump, it's actually able to flow and keep the engine cool. One of the things I noticed when I took the radiator off the car is it's really heavy. I'll weigh it at some point. It's got the electric fan on it, which will weigh a little bit, but I have drained it and I was still surprised how heavy it was. And I think it's just full of sludge. So that may be the reason that the engine has a blown head gasket was that even when the radiator fan had kicked on, the, it just wasn't cooling it down because there was just not enough flow through the radiator to actually cool that coolant down. So I want to make sure that they're not problems that I suffer from in the future. So there's no point in having a brand new radiator and then having blocked coolant galleries and, and uh, channels in the engine. So in order to pressure wash the engine, what I'm going to do is 3D print a load of caps that will sit over all the ports and things that I don't want water to get into. Obviously I can't pressure wash the inside of the cylinders because it will leak down the inside past the piston rings and into the sump and you know I just do not want water in those areas. So uh, I measured up, I came down and measured up all the ports and, and orifices that I needed to, to block and then unfortunately my 3D printer decided that it was going to stop working properly so I'll show you that later as well. But that has that's been my main focus in the evenings this week after work is trying to get my 3D printer to, to work and print properly. So that has to take a bit of a back seat at the moment. I think getting parts is more urgent than, uh, than washing the engine. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna get back to, to ordering. I made a couple of phone calls this afternoon before coming down here and yeah, not very successful I'm afraid. So this is the problem with trying to get parts at short notice for a 90s Italian car. It's uh, yeah, it's, and obviously there's a global situation with parts of everything, everything's expensive, there's a shortage of everything. So that's not ideal. Now I did order a load of parts when I first bought the Alpha. Um, Autodoc were having one of their 37% discount days, I think. If you use Autodoc or any of the websites like that, their discounts seem to oscillate. So sometimes they have like a 20% discount, but if you wait a few days, that'll go up to you know a 25 or even a 30% discount. So if you're not in a hurry for things, then you can wait and get a good deal on them. So I was looking on there for some other things and I noticed that they had a really good discount. So I thought, right, I'll get a load of bits for the Alpha. So I've got a brand new radiator for it. Uh, let me show you actually. So 
So this is the radiator. I have opened it just to check that it was all in good condition and none of the fins were bent or anything like that. Um, but I haven't fitted it to the car, so I'm hoping that that's the right one. Let's just get rid of that. I've got a full engine gasket set for a 24 valve 3 litre V6, so that's the wrong one. So I'm an idiot for not checking that I bought the right one. So I still need one of these for the 12 valve engine because they are different. Front and rear discs, brand new, um, as the ones on the car are quite rusty. And they come with new disc bolts, which is nice. Operated subframe bushes for the rear subframe because I noticed that the ones on there at the moment are completely perished. So these these actually are advertised as being for a Fiat Coupe, I think. But they still fit the Alpha 1.5, so that's good. And then a load of other bits. So Front and rear brake hose flexes, I've already got them. A replacement temperature sensor, I can't actually remember where that's for, but uh, I obviously thought it was a good idea to buy that at the time. One engine mount, I actually need to replace all of the engine mounts, so I'll have to check the auto dock in invoice to see whether this is for the 155 or the 164. Uh, but looking at one of the parts brochures, I think I need the 155 mounts. So obviously the engine and the gearbox are all Alpha 164, and then the chassis is 155. So the engine mounts are the, the interface between those two. So I wasn't sure when I actually bought this whether it was 155 or 164 mounts that I needed. But looking at the brochure and the parts catalogue of what I took off the car when I dismantled it, it looks like I need 155 mounts. So. That, I don't think it is one, so I'll need to order some more of those. Uh, but yeah, front and rear pads. It's been such a long time since I ordered this, I can't actually remember what's in here. Uh, right, drop links for the anti-roll bar, that's good, because I noticed that uh, they needed replacing, because they are pretty horrible on the car. And tie rod ends, so that's good because I had to angle grind the old ones off because the ball joints were so seized on that I couldn't get them off. Even with the induction heater and a large hammer, they still didn't want to budge. So because I was in such a hurry to get the engine out, um, I actually took the angle grinder to them. So I'm gonna have to get them out of the hub. So they're, they're still in the hub end. So this end isn't a problem, I can just unscrew this from the steering arm, uh, but it's, it's this end that's stuck in the hub that I need to reuse. So I won't be able to do anything until I've got that out. So that is one of the big problems that I've got to do. I'll show you a couple of the other problems that are facing me at the moment as well before I can actually start putting the car back together. Right, and then front and rear wheel bearings as well, so that's good. Oh no, just, just front wheel bearings. I obviously decided I didn't need any rears. They're empty. Right. they're empty because they're in there. There's two tie rods and two, whatever they were. Okay, so that's not a bad start. I've got some parts, but as I said, water pump, clutch, and all the belts, so cam belt and the hydraulic tensioner. So the Busso V6 actually has a detensioner. So what that means is the, the pulley, the tensioning pulley pushes a lot of pressure onto the engine when it's cold, when there's no oil pressure. So when you first start the engine, the cam belt is as tight as it can be because the detensioner is pushing as hard as it can onto it and then it's actually released slightly by engine oil pressure. So once the engine has started and oil pressure has got to the detensioner, it actually relaxes it off. So as the engine warms up, the belt doesn't need to be as tight. So 
that's obviously something that Alpha thought was necessary. Um, I've never seen it before on any other engine. Uh, they've always had a, a mechanical tensioner that you just set and it applies a constant tension or constant pressure to the belt. Um, but yeah, so this has a this detensioner mechanism and reading up on the forum, a lot of people do just block off the oil feed and use a mechanical uh, tensioner, but apparently the detensioner, the hydraulic detensioner is much better. So if I can get a replacement or refurbish mine, then that's what I'm going to do because that's obviously how the manufacturer intended. But again, it's a really rare part. None of the normal places stock these things. I found one place in Germany that has it and it's 150 quid. Uh, whether they've got any in stock to ship to the UK, I don't know. That's uh, something I need to find out. But these are the challenges that are just exaggerated by being under such a tight time pressure. It's four weeks and I still need to get it insured, taxed, MOT'd. Uh, the tyres that are in it aren't legal so I have to get some tyres. So that's not a big deal but it's just another job that I have to do at the last minute so I don't have the luxury of shopping around to get a good deal. I just have to go to the shop and get whatever they've got. Obviously I'm going to be driving around the Nürburgring so I don't want to just be putting on the cheapest ditch finders that I can find as well. Um, it's a job that did need doing but as I said with a bit more time you can shop around find the right tires get a good deal and save yourself a bit of money now when i was dismantling the car three of these drive shaft bolts wouldn't even come undone basically there was absolutely no space to get a spanner onto this nut because you can see this part of this flange was in the way so i couldn't get there wasn't any space to get a ring spanner or a socket onto it just absolutely no chance so i had to just use an across flat spanner and because these were so tight it just wasn't undoing it was just rounding off inside the spanner so th three of them i managed to get undone but three of them i ended up having to drill these out from this end so you can see that that is actually drilled because that's where the head of this bolt was on the other side of the shaft so i've now got to drill or grind these off so i can get them out backwards or grind them off here so I can then take them out forwards, one or the other. I think I don't really want to grind them off on this side because it's so close to this and that's that's a bearing in there. I don't want to get swarf and everything inside there. Whereas if I grind them off here, then I can at least tape all this up to stop any swarf getting inside there. And then hopefully that will be enough just to be able to get them out. But that's another job I need to do. And then obviously I need to replace these bolts. As I mentioned earlier, the engine had obviously been leaking for some time as the outside of it is completely covered in oil and dirt, as is the front cross piece that the under tray mounts to, and all the auxiliaries that are attached to the engine. I'm not going to put these back onto the engine in this state. I don't know what condition they're in, and they're in such an awkward place on the rear of the engine. If one of them fails, it would be a big job to swap it out, so I'll get them refurbished before refitting them. It's a little extra cost at this stage, but it's the right thing to do in the long run. But I'm not taking them to a shop to get them refurbished in this state. You can see that the engine must also have been leaking coolant as there are these deposits in between the V. This is most likely because the coolant system was being pressurised by the blown head gasket. The main coolant pipe from the thermostat is also in a pretty sorry state. The brake pipes are also looking pretty corroded. I knew I was going to replace the flexes as I didn't know how old they were. However, some of the hard pipes will also need replacing. There are also a couple of rust patches that I'd like to address before putting the engine back in the engine bay. The first of the 3D printed parts that I want to make are the caps for the end of the cylinders. Now I measured the bore of the cylinder with my vernier caliper and it measured 927 millimeters. Looking the spec of the engine up online, it actually states it as 93, so I'm glad that I double checked it. I modelled the inside of the cylinder with the intention of making a cap that would have an o-ring around it, so when you press the cap into the top of the cylinder, the o-ring would be compressed and it would seal against the high pressure water from the pressure washer. This is the first one that I printed. So you can see the two grooves where the o-ring is going to sit. Now unfortunately this one was a bit too big and that's because the o-rings didn't compress as much as I thought they would when they were fitted around the cap. 
So this meant that I couldn't actually fit it into the bore of the cylinder. So I updated the model and reduced the diameter slightly, but I also had to change the material in my printer because this black material was running out. So I printed the next one in this blue material, which is actually a different material altogether. This is a PET-G, whereas this black material is PLA. So because it's a different material, I had to change the settings in the 3D printer. This one printed fine in the new material, so I set it up to print five more, and for some reason, they wouldn't print properly. You can see that the, the material just wasn't bonding together, and I had to abort this print because it's just really stringy. I tried another one and it was even worse. So I tried a load of things, but really all this problem solving takes a lot of time, which is something I don't really have a lot of at the moment. So that's why I've made the decision that um, I need to focus on getting the parts. And then if I can get all the main parts, then I'll fix the 3D printer and print the rest of the caps so that I can then carry on with washing the engine. Now, unfortunately, I'm not going to get around to ordering any of these parts tomorrow because I've got something else planned. Now, obviously, the Alpha is the most important thing. As I keep saying, I've only got four weeks. It's really not enough time and I shouldn't be doing anything else. But this has been planned for a long time and I can't let the guy down. So tomorrow I'm doing something quite exciting and I will bring you a video on it, hopefully by the end of the weekend. So make sure you check that out. Um, if you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you'll get notified as soon as that's out. Also, make sure you check out the Instagram and Facebook pages for Octane Vane because I will be updating them more regularly than the YouTube channel. As always, thanks for watching, guys. If you've got any questions or comments, please leave them below. Uh, if anyone out there needs a full gasket set for a 24 valve 3 litre V6 from an Alpha 164 then leave me a comment um, I've got one going spare and uh, yeah if anyone has any uh, good ideas of where to get parts just yeah leave a comment I obviously appreciate it so thanks very much for watching and yeah hopefully give you another video in the next couple of days